Shamar James, you are the Florida Gators' most explosive defensive playmaker. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being Locked On Gators, your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free for every listen to the podcast and on YouTube. Happy Friday, happy 4th of July weekend. Hopefully you're still off. I am Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Giants Country and NFL 33. Today's episode of Locked On Gators is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms to apply. And if you listen to yesterday's episode, uh, I mentioned that you know it's Fourth of July weekend. You shoot fireworks; they're explosive. So yesterday we talked about the most explosive Florida Gators offensive players. Today, Florida Gators most explosive defensive players. And, and don't get me wrong; it's not easy to be an explosive defensive player. I will say, Shamar James, though. Right up there. Right up there. Top notch. Uh, Shamar James in 2023 had 23 stops. And I don't mean tackles. I mean stops. A stop is when a defensive player makes a tackle for a gain of three yards or less. Because in any situation, a, a tackle for a gain of three or less is, or in most situations, a tackle for a gain of three or less, you're happy with, right? Whether it's a tackle for a loss. Tackle for no gain, tackle for one, two, or three yards. You're fine with it. First down, you're fine with doing that because then you're on second and seven. You're fine doing it on second down. Then you're at third and four. You're fine doing it on third down. Then you're at fourth and one. Crazy how math works, right? So Shamar James had 23 run stops there. Or, or sorry, 23 stops against the run and the pass. Because also, I don't know if you know this, Shamar James allowed a lot of completions in terms of how many times his assignment was targeted. On average, they were targeted behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's where he was allowing catches, behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, But yeah, Shamar James, 23 stops, was the third most on the entire team. And I want you to think about that for just a second, and I want you to think about why that's genuinely impressive that he had the third most stops, the third most tackles for a gain of three or less. Why it's impressive from 2023. If you're stumped, the reason it's impressive is because he played eight games. He played three quarters of the season. He played 75% of the season. And he was third on the team in stops. I also want to say, how embarrassing that is (laughs) like i i just want it's impressive for shamar but i mean that's also embarrassing that the guy who missed four games who missed a quarter of the season had the third most stops on your team because even when he was healthy and playing he wasn't playing every snap he's playing a lot of them but he wasn't the only linebacker playing out there say an 87.8 passer rating allowed for Shamar James, which isn't awesome. I want to make that clear. It's not bad by any stretch, but was the lowest amongst full-time active starters for the Florida Gators in 2023 by a large margin. Yeah. Okay. Really, really, those are genuinely good numbers. Like there's a reason that people value Shamar James. He's very good at playing football, okay? He is a genuinely very good football player, just so you know. And one thing where I am pissed we didn't get to see it last year is that, or we didn't get to see it enough last year, is that Shamar James throughout his college career, throughout his career with the Florida Gators, and hell, even if you go back to his days in Mobile, Alabama, when Shamar James was in high school, even if you go back to those days, Shamar James has been effective as a pass rusher. You go back and watch his high school film. When he was committed under Dan Mullen to Florida, and you look at the film, and he's finding success rushing the passer. 
Okay. So you go back to his high school film, successful rushing the passer. He commits from Florida, recommits to Florida. 2022, successful rushing the passer when given the opportunity. Don't forget, 2022 also was a year where he was a backup linebacker, true freshman that played, which that in of itself should be impressive. True freshman playing in what was a fairly senior linebacker group. Amari Bernie, Ventrell Miller there, right? Pretty successful, pretty great there. Uh, Mahmoud Diabate? Yeah, and Diabate was with... No, I, I, Diabate was with Utah in 2023 and Florida in 2022. Um, fairly certain. So he's undefeated in that series. But the rest of the linebackers in 2023 were so awful in pass coverage that Shamar James was constantly kept in as a pass cover man. Derek Wingo's on the field, and, and they're sending one linebacker, they're sending Wingo. Scooby Williams on the field, and they're sending one linebacker on a blitz, they're sending Scooby. The only other option there to not keep him in coverage was with Manny Nunnery. And I know a lot of people hate Manny Nunnery, for the 4th and 14 against Missouri. He was genuinely probably even better than Shamar in coverage last year. I know pass rating-wise not, but 4th and 14 definitely didn't help. Uh, but genuinely, Manny was Manny Nunnery was either the best or second best cover linebacker on the team last year. The issue with that is that he was a rotational player. So when he wasn't on the field, Shamar had to be in pass coverage because the other linebackers were complete liabilities. And Manny Nunnery really took over when Shamar James got hurt, so they didn't even play many snaps together. But Shamar James, throughout his career, just football career, has been effective as a pass rusher. And hopefully this year, we will see him get those opportunities where he actually found some pretty impressive success and I do think that with Ron Roberts especially, we'll see that. Because don't forget, part of it for me with the, the defense blitzing last year was that the blitzes were predictable. It was that linebacker that's not Shamar, never the slot, never the safeties, or obviously sometimes the slot, sometimes the safeties. But usually it was the not Shamar linebacker. And it was pretty damn predictable and pretty damn easy to stop. But with Shamar, like Shamar has that quick first step that we talk about with like Gerard Davis, Florida Gators legend. When he was at Florida and even with the Detroit Lions, New York Giants, everywhere he was, Jets, he was good as a pass rusher from that off-ball linebacker spot because he had such a quick first step that he could just burst through the line. Like you don't need to show a blitz with him. You can snap it and he can pick. Like he can go, okay, I'm blitzing on either side of the guard. We'll see how it happens. I like, will see what happens at the start of the snap and see what area is open. And I'm going to blitz that gap. And Shamar can do that. Hopefully, he gets the opportunity to do that in 2024 with what's hopefully just a much improved defense in general. With passion, drive, and patience, that's the formula for winning championships. And it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your parts guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash for all the parts you need, the prices you want. It's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge Wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Thanks for being locked on, Gators. Your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts and on YouTube. And I got to say, I've given this man a lot of flack. Also, I will say, ESports College Football 23 or 25 comes out in under two weeks. W-H-O-L-E-N-I-N-E -E, Sports on YouTube. We're putting dynasties out, including a Florida Gators dynasty. We're getting back to the glory. 
Um, and we've been doing MLB Road to the Show. We just got called up. Same. Just got called up to the majors for the Toronto Blue Jays as a starting pitcher. Um, but I've given this player a lot of flack, and I will continue to do so this year. But Jason Marshall Jr., second most explosive playmaker on this Florida Gators defense. And again, I know he's got plenty of flaws. I do. He's made plenty of mental errors, bringing up the the Will Shepard long touchdown against Vanderbilt where, yes, Will, Shepard, Will Shepard's finger got caught in Jason Marshall's face mask. Also, I want to make it clear, Will Shepard did not grab his face mask. One finger got caught in it when he was trying to break the press. And Jason Marshall just stopped and stared and looked and, and, and gave up a huge touchdown, which, again, my issue is just not playing through the whistle. He's got flaws, plenty of coverage miscues. What more can I do? The tweet. I'm not saying he's the best defensive player on the team, but he is one of the most explosive playmakers on the defense. He had the most forced incompletions on the team. And forced incompletions are, you know, batting the ball down when a receiver is trying to catch it, just getting your hands in there and breaking up the most on the team with eight. Okay. Led the team there. And he showed some flashes of making plays there. When in coverage, he had three passes broken up and passes broken up are different from incompletions force because passes broken up are when you're getting to the ball before the receiver. So if I reach up and I get a hand on it, Goes out, whatever, hits the ground, pass broken up. He had a dropped interception, um, which isn't included in passes broken up. And if you remember the if do you remember the dropped interception? Scary, I'll give you a second, like Dora the Explorer. It's Kentucky. It's the Kentucky game. Uh drop pick. Close one, right at the first down marker. Tough to see. Could have been a big, big momentum changer there as well. Um, but it happens. That's they hey, what, what's that saying that they used to put in like Madden for years? It's like, well, there's a reason he doesn't play wide receiver. That's that, right? So Jason Marshall, three passes broken up and a dropped interception. Oh, so four pass defended there. However, another thing that makes Jason Marshall explosive and why I chose to put him on this list, which or not why I chose, but one of the reasons I chose to put him on this list is when he's been used as a blitzer, he's been insanely effective. Okay? He blitzed last season 10 times. Okay? Jason Marshall blitzed 10 times in 2023. He picked up two pressures. And two passes batted down at the line. Also different from passes broken up. Also different from incompletions forced. Also different from a drop in reception. You add these up and you're at like, what, 15, 14 times that he broke up. And by passes batted down, if you remember, I think it was a Georgia game he had one of them, where he blitzes, they try to throw it to that side that he's blitzing, and he just jumps up and bats it down and gets in the path. He did that twice on 10 chances. 40% of Jason Marshall's blitz opportunities ended with him either getting a pressure or batting passes down. Honestly, that that effectiveness as a blitzer is why earlier in the offseason, I suggested, hey, maybe try him out at star. He's not, he's not not physical. Like, I, I don't want that to be like, he's not not physical. I'm not saying he's insanely physical. He's not Chauncey. But he's not scared of contact like Jalen Kimber was. Um, but Jason Marshall, like in the slot, could work with it, with just how effective he's been as a blitzer. But you could also argue he's been effective because he's been blitzing so infrequently and from cornerback instead of slot. Like there's obviously levels to everything. But Jason Marshall has been very effective when given that opportunity. And hopefully, even though he's not playing star this year, just saying. Hopefully the guy that is going to play star for the Florida Gators will find that success.
Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer that it gets to first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the lowest price guaranteed. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. I love the views from your seat. Love being able to just look at exactly what I'm going to see. Like, I know that there's some baseball stadiums, or, or probably most baseball stadiums, I think every one that I've been to, there's some sections where you have a seat and there's a, a giant post in the way. You can check on game time. You can check to make sure that that, that will not be an issue with your seats. Okay? You can check to make sure, hey, I, I have a clear view of home plate. You could check to see all that. Beautiful. No no surprise fees either. Ah, I love game time. Lowest price guarantee means that if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Yeah. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code locked on college for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free for the podcast and on YouTube. And like I said, at the start of yesterday's episode, when we started this, I said every player on this list is someone that we saw play last year significantly. Like that's why Aiden Mizell was not on the list last year because we didn't see him play enough to say, yeah, He's the, one of the most explosive players. I mean, re- realistically, you throw the ball deep to him, probably going to be up there, right? This last player is the one sole exception to the guy that we didn't see enough of. But this is something where I don't think numbers can truly back it up. I don't think stats can truly back it up. However, Welcome to my call your shot moment. That's what this is. This this is me. I I planted the flag months ago. Been a big fan of his since high school. Over at Barton Trail. Maybe with me. Sharif Denson, the guy who is expected to be the starting nickel this year, starting slot, starting star, whatever you want to call that position. It's expected to be there. And I got to say, I know that we don't, we don't have a ton of film. He played five games defensively uh, last year. He played more special teams. Florida State played a lot, played well. I really, truly, genuinely feel that Sharif Denson's skill set is just built to be a disruptive playmaker. And, and don't forget, entering his so- true sophomore season now. He's got a lot of time to develop. He's got at least this year and next year if he chooses to stay in Gainesville. And I only say that not because there's rumors, but just because the transfer portal is insane. Why not just say that to preface it? Um, but I, I really think that Sharif Denson's skill set is just built to be a disruptive playmaker. And I want to take this back to the spring game. And I think I'm someone who I've said ad nauseum that, hey, I'm not going to put too much weight in the spring game because I don't think it's smart to do that. I, I just think that you're setting yourself up for complete disappointment at that level, which is, again, because it's a spring game. Sample size is very small. But Sharif Denson was just wild, playing the most complex position on defense, I believe the second hardest position in all of football. I think quarterback's the hardest, and then I think it's slot as in nickel, not slot receiver. But Shreve Denson had a hell of a spring game. He was matched up against six foot seven Hayden Hansen on one play. Okay? Covered him. And the next play, he's covering Trey Wilson in man coverage. That's the kind of stuff where, like, you can just feel that they're built different. And I think that's I think that's where I get it. Like that, that's why I'm like, all right, Shreve Denson just feels like he's built different when you watch him play. So he is. With almost no experience playing at the college level, he knew where he was supposed to go consistently. 
he showed flashes of being really good covering Hayden. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying either Hayden or or Trey are prime Antonio Brown. But they're two vastly different size and skill set players. Again, Hayden's six seven, Trey's what, six feet? Shreve Denson covered them both back to back. Press on both of them as well. Come on now. He also had that play covering Shimmer DK where he just like they both lost their footing. Shreve Denson recovered and fought and picked off the ball that Graham Mertz threw over the middle. Shreve Denson has had two pass rush opportunities in 2023. Okay. Shreve Denson rushed the passer twice last season, picked up pressures on both of them. And I do think that Sharif Denson is going to be put in that spot because I talked about this kind of frequently, especially recently. Jaden Hill last year exceeded expectations. Wasn't good, exceeded expectations, okay? Because I thought he'd be bad. I didn't think he had the agility to place that, that star spot. But what he didn't do at all, or he did not, I think it was like 6% of his past defense snaps, was blitz. Wasn't used as a pass rusher at all which crippled the defensive game plan as well. And again, I don't know if it's because he wasn't used that way just because he wasn't good at it, or if it's because they didn't want to take a linebacker and put him in coverage. Like if you put a linebacker in coverage, you're, if you're blitzing Jaden Hill, you have to keep a linebacker in coverage. Otherwise you're sacrificing coverage and you don't want to keep a linebacker in coverage. I get it. I understand it. I think this year Sharif Jensen changes that. I think when all the factors come into it, Ron Roberts loves blitzing this slot. You got that change, that big change for Ron Roberts. You've got better cover linebackers allowing you to kind of open up the defensive playbook a little bit. And I think you've just got someone like Sharif that's willing and able to get gritty against the run and in the past. He was one of the few players that actually tackled people one-on-one and like solidly tackled them one-on-one. Big fan of what Sharif Jensen did in the spring game. Big fan of what Sharif Jensen can do in general for the Florida Gators. I do think that he's going to really open things up for this defense this year. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free. Everybody listen to the podcast and on YouTube. We'll be back tomorrow. Or no, we won't. Maybe we will. We'll see what happens. Maybe there's a commit. I don't know. But who knows? Florida doesn't recruit anymore, apparently. For Locked On Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Giants, Country, and NFL 33. I will see you all next time.